This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. A certain man was sitting in his living room reading a book one evening when suddenly he smelled smoke and, glancing up, observed his house to be on fire. But no sooner than he arose to procure a bucket of water than he chanced to notice that the top of his piano had become dusty. And so, being a meticulous person, he paused, took out his handkerchief, and began carefully, painstakingly, to wipe and polish the piano. End of parable, meaning obvious. A vast many religionists are all busy dusting the furniture while the house is on fire. It is possible to become so worried about the niceties of religion that you overlook the necessities of religion, whether or not God's will gets done, and whether you are valiantly living in faith and brotherhood as Jesus of Nazareth taught. So short-sightedly does humankind forget the living presence of God. When you have shut the doors and made a darkness within, says Epictetus, the ancient Greek philosopher, remember never to say that you are alone, for you are not alone, for God is there. And Clement of Alexandria in the second century described with poetic insight the effect of spiritual vision upon the tasks of the common life. And I quote, Holding festival then in our whole life, persuaded that God is altogether on every side present, we cultivate our fields praising. We sail the sea hymning. In all the rest of our conversation, we conduct ourselves according to rule. That joy of life may be yours. Because Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, more happily, more joyously. Gerald Kennedy wrote, Religion can cure worry. It can free a man's mind. For the religious man can leave something always to God. After he has done his very best, he can say, Now it is God's turn. Jesus said, Fear not, be not anxious. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The love of God for you is powerful. It can transform your life. Some cynics and critics say that religion makes no real difference. But the religion of Jesus is love. And any person truly possessed by the power of love is transformed forever by it. Witness the way for the love of a woman. A man is capable of changing his ways and living a different life. Love possesses renewing power. And if the love of a good woman can change a man and vice versa, then just think for a moment what the mighty love of the living God can accomplish in your human life. To feel the truth, to experience the truth, that you are infinitely loved by the infinite God will not leave your life as it has been in the past. It will renew you. Your ability to love another person is something divine in you. People talk about falling in love, but you don't fall in love. You rise to love. For love is not the lowest in you, it is the highest. For love is spiritual. Love is of God, and God loves you. It's not so important that you love everybody beginning tomorrow morning, but rather that you learn to love one more person every day or every week but expand that circle of your love. I remember one time in an old movie, I saw the late internationally beloved cowboy performer Will Rogers doing rope tricks. And in one of them, he began by spinning his lariat in a small circle. And when it was going smoothly enough, he jumped inside of it. For a while, there was only room in it for himself. But then he began feeding more and more rope into his whirling lariat, and the circle grew wider and bigger, ever wider and larger, and as that revolving lasso began expanding, other performers, one by one, started jumping into that spinning circle of rope along with him. So, love, which may begin as a small circle of self-love, which you spin around yourself with no room for anybody else, but which, if you will, you can widen and expand until there is space in it for more and more, until indeed the circle of your love has become for all intentions the very equator of this earth, and one day in eternity the circumference of this universe itself, such was the circle of Jesus' love, and infinitely such is the circle of God's love as well. It is universal, unlimited for everyone. Jesus said even to love your enemies. He said, what is so unusual about loving your friends, doing good to those who do good to you? He said, love those 
who speak ill of you, desire good for them, and thus glorify the Spirit of the living God. Don't put your light under a bushel, but let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Life is too brief to live it in hatred. Live rather in forgiveness and in love. An eminent pediatrician has a standard treatment for those babies who seem not to be getting along well. When he sees a frail baby's chart, he scrawls the following message on it. Quote, this baby is to be loved every three hours. But newborn babies aren't the only ones who need affection. This feeling of loneliness and insecurity leads to many of humanity's physical ills. So when you care for others, you have discovered the secret of love, no matter how the philosophers talk about and theorize about love, there will always be something left unsaid. Suffice it to say, the highest joy in life is loving and being loved. Jesus' two great commandments were, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the desire to do good to someone wrote the poet Coleridge, all thoughts, all passions, all delights, whatever stirs this mortal frame, are but ministers of love and feed that sacred flame. Benjamin Franklin wrote, if you would be loved, love and be lovable. It is written in the scriptures, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And the statesman Benjamin Disraeli said, we are all born for love. It is the principle of existence and is life's only end. Swedenborg said, love in its essence is spiritual fire, and it is written, many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. Some spiritual consciousness exists within each one of us. However we may describe it, God has given a fragment of himself to indwell us, each and all. Said Jesus, the kingdom of God is within you. The dramatist Thornton Wilder in his play, Our Town, portrayed in a striking manner this relationship of the individual to God, the address on the envelope sent to a girl by her minister when she was sick, read, Jane Crofit, the Crofit Farm, Grover's Corners, Sutton County, New Hampshire, United States of America, continent of North America, Western Hemisphere, the Earth, the Solar System, the Universe, the Mind of God. You too are a member in this vast and starry, universal family of God. God loves you. God has transforming power for your life available this moment, if you will claim it. It is written in the portrayals of the life of Jesus that he went into Jericho and was making his way through it. And here we find a man called Zacchaeus, a chief collector of taxes and wealthy, wanting to see what sort of person this Jesus was. But the crowds prevented him from seeing him, for he was a very short man. So he ran up ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree to get a view of Jesus as he was heading that way. And when Jesus reached this spot, he looked up and he saw the man and said, Zacchaeus, hurry up and come down, for I am going to be your guest today. Zacchaeus hurriedly climbed down the tree and gladly welcomed Jesus, but the bystanders muttered and murmured their disapproval, saying, Now he's gone to stay and have lunch with a sinner. But Zacchaeus himself stopped and said to Jesus, I will give half my property to the poor, and if I have swindled anybody out of anything, I will pay him back four times over. And Jesus said to him, Salvation has come to this house today. Here is the stirring story of a man whose life was changed in an instant. He was a swindler. But when he saw that this Jesus of Nazareth could still care about him and love him, he became so inspired that his life was changed from that moment forth. So may your life be transformed. The Apostle Paul wrote, Be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transformed in the Greek is metanoia, which means to have a change of mind. God can change your mind, your emotions, the way you think and feel and act and react, so that it's with love, it's with peace of heart, peace of soul, long-suffering, forbearing, kindness, patience, tolerance, 
control of temper and anger, perspective, compassion, forgiveness, mercy, calmness, the desiring of good for everyone. These are fruits of the Spirit which will manifest themselves in your life when you give yourself wholeheartedly, holding nothing back, nothing in reserve, laying your life on the line, saying, God, here am I, take me, use me, do with me as you will, whatever it is your will that I should speak or do or become, you have all of my life, all that I am, all that I ever hope to be, I commit to you. It is my will that your will be done. Your life will be transformed and you will be renewed in your inner heart and soul to become the person God created you to be. In one little town in the southwestern corner of my home state of Kansas, there was a fellow everybody called Old Bill. He was the town drinker and ne'er-do-well. But then... One night, somebody took old Bill to a prayer meeting. And the next day, when a friend of his came up to him on the street and said, Well, if it isn't old Bill. No, he said, it isn't old Bill. It's new Bill. He said, because I found God last night, and today I am brand new. God likewise can change your life. If you will give it to God and pray with all your heart the prayer, Your will be done. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>